And now, Between Ourselves. My name is Stan Peters, and this is a program about scientists, hunters, legends, and the man-like animal some say really exists in the coastal regions of British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and California. Our two principal contributors are John Green, former mayor of Harrison, and Donald Abbott, curator of archaeology at the BC Provincial Museum. We were about, oh, I guess three miles, something like that, from our main camp. Uh, we had rounded a bend in the trail. The creek was coming down this canyon, and uh, the wind was blowing down the canyon. So uh, that I think this is probably the reason that we come up on this thing by uh, without us knowing we were coming. Uh, the first thing I knew, my horse stopped, and I caught something out of the corner of my eye, and then my horse kind of jumped backwards and, and reared with me. And as he did so, I pulled on him, and I pulled a little bit too hard, and we both went uh, to the ground. I was able to get up and get a hold of him and get in my saddlebags and get my camera out, and I turned him loose yelled to Bob to cover me. Uh, at the time that I had got up and went to around the horse and uh, held his front rein, uh, held the reins, I looked over to my left and seen the thing. And then, uh, then it was about 120 feet, fairly close. It was standing by the edge of the creek. Uh, I felt that it was kneeling when we first seen it and it didn't, didn't appear to be as big as what it did when I, because I just caught a glimpse. Uh, it could have even been a bear, the first glimpse that I got. It uh, turned and walked up the bank and then turned around again and looked directly at us before it got up to the top of this bank. We were able to get, at that point, I wasn't actually looking through the camera. Uh, I had just was glancing at it and getting it out of my bag at that point, I yelled to Bob to cover me, which he turned loose the uh, pack horse, and I uh, turned loose my horse, because he was fighting me, kind of, and uh, Bob had a 30 out 6 and his horse wasn't giving him much trouble. And uh, so then I started taking pictures of the thing, because it didn't appear to be aggressive. It was going the other direction, or at a pretty much of a direction away from us, and uh, I ran some of the way and had to run down through the creek up on the other side of the bank, and that's when I got the best pictures of the thing. I think the first part of the film showed where the man had difficulty in taking pictures. It was as if it, uh, the camera was falling sideways, and the trees were up and down, and so on, and finally he got it straightened out, which showed the Sasquatch walking away from the man. And uh, several things impressed me at the time, a and um, they did a very fine job of showing it to us because they stopped it still, they reversed it, they showed it in slow motion, and it gave us a real opportunity to see the creature. And one thing, it must have been a big creature because the trees seemed small where it was walking and uh, one thing that really impressed us was the walk because it was very smooth not like a person at all it was like a gliding walk uh, so what we see from the pictures was uh, a very graceful looking animal on its two feet and I would say it probably weighed around six, seven hundred pounds, maybe eight hundred pounds. We didn't immediately follow it. Bob started, I yelled at him to come back. Uh, I was out of film. There had been these other three sets of tracks found, and this appeared to be a female. Uh, I felt that possibly a, a big male could be right in the vicinity, and that I was standing there without any weapon at all, and this didn't uh, set too good with me. Um, so he come back. We went at that point and got my horse. He'd run down the the uh, 
trail there about uh, half a mile or so and uh, come back up, load the camera up, went after the thing. The creek, it, it followed the creek uh, quite a little ways and at that particular place up there, there's quite a bit of iron deposit in this creek. Wherever you uh, step, it breaks this and uh, uh, actually, you know, leaves practically a print right down the bottom of the, of the creek and uh, went up one of these side tributaries and the same thing in those. So we followed it for, uh, like I say, three miles, the last half a mile on foot. It got so dense that uh, we felt that if the thing was going to uh, ambush us, come circle back around or something, if it, it wanted to, it could. So we come back out and uh, decided to get out in the valley, see if we get dogs, and uh, come up for the next day. This we done, and the next morning it began to rain, and it rained in there for quite a while and washed uh, things out real badly. I felt we was lucky to get what we got at that particular time. I suppose that uh, in the Northwest, myself and uh, DeHendon and Green know as much about these things as anybody, but yet we know very little. Uh, we haven't got one, and even if we had one, we'd still know very little about their uh, wild habits. I actually think that, uh, you know, it's always, you know, hard to believe something close to home, you know. And uh, we found that uh, uh, we the film was shown this year uh, in uh, uh, quite a number of areas, and we actually found that I think we had a better reception uh, uh, if the further we got away from this area.